Yes, so good day and welcome once again to the talk. It's always a pleasure being here. I'm always, I said, I am always happy to be here. So welcome to Talk Your Talk. And uh, what I'm going to talk about now is where are we in the scheme of things? Okay. And... Uh, when I say the scheme of things, I referring to our place, you know, on the face of the earth as it is, you know. You see, we have to know where we at, right? We have to know even when we are, because I'll tell you what. The time we are living in are time created by who? By our enemies. I have to say that. The place where we are and the system where we are was not created for us. It was created by our enemies for our enemies and because we are not living in our time in that in the true sense of the word and we are not living in our in our location you know you find that it is very difficult for us to to strive you know but then we have to because although we are not living in our actual location, in our original location, but where we are is still our father's home. Now we talk about freedom on a regular basis. We talk about freedom and independence. We talk about all this stuff, you know. But what do we consider to be our freedom, you know? I mean, I always try to see if I could get like a common understanding as to what we consider to be our freedom. You know? And sometimes when I think about our freedom, you know, I have this tendency to think about people like uh, Marcos Garvey you know and his idea you know his vision of black people carving out a piece of this earth for themselves in that sense the black people that came into slavery right we our people being independent having everything that um, we need and we could we could function in our own community independently you know I think about freedom most times along those lines and I thought of freedom in relation to what our people had been doing in Tulsa, Oklahoma you know being their own independent people have their own independent industries you know I think about freedom along those lines and in a case like if we have to trade with other races, we could trade with them, you know, on an equal basis as businessmen and businesswomen. A case where we have our own school educating our own children about our own history, you know, and our culture and way of life. And I'm not talking about the accumulated or uh, the acquired culture that we develop here as we come in slavery. 
when I talk about when I think about freedom I think about my people who had lived and were enslaved in Egypt you know a few thousand years ago I think about those people I think about people like um, Mushi or Moses I think about people like uh, Joseph you know I think about all those people because I have this tendency to go basically almost right back to choose where I actually came from where we came from originally you know and somehow I'm seeing little um, disturbances in our journey you see and because I'm seeing those disturbances I think we have to be able to rectify those disturbances those things that have been causing us problems for thousands of years we have to rectify that so that we could be totally free you know think about it Joseph was sold into Egypt by who by his own brothers and trust me they were our people he was basically betrayed by his own brothers I hope you get what I'm coming at Moses was betrayed by his own brother you understand he had to leave Egypt and flee now we could trace that come right down Yahushua HaMashiach most of you who call him Jesus which I should I should say is not a name you should be calling the um, our Savior he was betrayed by who by his same friend who was what just like us our people listen you know he was also betrayed by not actually betrayed but he was basically <laughs> How I should put this word, what Peter did. Peter denied him three times. But he was forgiven. Our people. That is how we do. We rule with you until we find things is not going basically in our favor or they think it could go better in their favor and boom, they sell you out. And it always, most of the time, involves money, envy, jealousy, whatever. Why do you think Cain killed Abel? Envy, jealousy. It's happening in our community up to now. Now, think about it. People like, watch. <laughs> Even in the, slave, in the slavery times, when people were escaping from slavery black people were betraying their own people yes that is that true we have to face that reality you know we can't cover on that who betrayed marcus garvey who caused marcus garvey to make errors that caused his business not to flourish and he was doing it for his people he wasn't doing it for himself he was doing it for his own people for our people and he was betrayed by his very own people both in and out because the first man that joined the FBI or whatever they call that the man he was a black man and they only employ him to spy on Marcus Garvey 
to infiltrate the system and bring news and stuff like that the same person who he appoint to sail his ship as captain which was black dupe him yes that's what we do if you come right down and i'm just touching on a few just to let you know you have Malcolm X Malcolm X he was betrayed by black people his own people and he was fighting for his own people you could say what you want that's what we do and that is why we always find ourselves holding the nasty end of the stick that is why the most I always have this thing that just send us in slavery I mean, come on, we are sharing so much struggles together and we just can't get it. You understand? To unite and love each other. That is our error. That is our mistake. We're making centuries after centuries. It doesn't matter how much you might say how we were great and a black man maybe was the richest man. Yes, all that. That's no problem. But the fact is, we're constantly making the same mistake constantly. Just that mistake of not being able to love, respect, and honor each other. You understand? We have this nasty habit. Even look at Morris Bishop. Who betrayed him? You know, who had the whole thing twisted? own people who betrayed people like Steve Biko they were fighting for, I mean why we have to go through all that throughout the centuries and some of you like to say well they teaching you that you that we have a cause yeah but then it is very easy to get over this cause and mash up the system that old system we're living in that wasn't created for us all we have to do is to learn to live live in love and unity with each other why we cannot do that if you look around in our daily lives as it is right now okay you will find people within our communities in your job on the street you know, wherever, in your so-called churches, well, it is abundant in there. And they fight for it. They fight against each other. They have power struggles constantly. You understand? That is what is happening with our people. And Yahushua said, I will give you one command. A simple commandment to give. He said, I'm giving you a new commandment. The commandment, that commandment was always there, but he knew it, in other words. He said, but I'm giving you a new commandment. Love one another. Because what happened is that every time we try to get close or we make the attempt to get close to each other and try to respect each other, you always find that some outside force always stepping in and create another Judas. Creating some discontent. Creating situations where people start to feel that they require more or they need more, they should get more. You know, and stuff like that. And breeding discontent among the people and that's how it is and then it break down your whole system the point is we have to be aware of those things we have to be aware of the external forces that comes in and try to diss us we have to be like that you see now for ages all these things happen but what I realize is that 
as time changes decade after decade the outside forces as a matter of fact are enemies and don't get it twisted you do have enemies right most of you fail to understand that you don't want to understand that like you're in denial i don't know what you're scared of but you do have enemies and what happened to these people is that every age every decade every time as it goes on they're changing the rules as they go they're creating and recycling their wickedness to fit into whatever situation that might occur in our community and they mess us up that way but we are not actually being aware of that you know we just going through like that so then they always catch you yeah this evil and demonic forces always catch you because you don't think as the scriptures say you don't consider you understand and you don't consider hey you don't know who you are you don't know who is your owner you just don't know who you are scripture tells you that that is why you are constantly making the same mistake over and over and over again right and that is why we never actually reach this ultimate ah community that we want we crave so much that our ancestors and our foreparents wanted so much her of freedom you understand most of the time i mean if you listen to past videos that may all in the 50s and those times come up people always seems to have this grasp that there is freedom around the corner but why is it it never materialized it never materialized because the enemies are there battling with you and you are not battling with the enemy you're trying to join with the enemy and that is what we do every time you see the enemy always riding side by side with you infiltrating your community riding with you and tripping you at specific places at specific time where well, they have good timing in their wickedness anyway so then we have to be aware of that the important thing is we have to learn to live with each other we have to learn to to deal with each other in a respectful manner like if we are one family now we didn't we wasn't here maybe a hundred to three five hundred maybe a thousand years ago we were brought here we have to understand that but the situation is that we have to make our life here so if we have to make our life here and they give us a particular way to live here they make a system that a subsystem of theirs you know so that we could live and maybe stay down or whatever we could use that system and create our system but the system we have to create we have to create a system that is that dwells within us and the only way we could express that system and make that system work for us in the middle of all these hiddens we have to learn to live together we must we have to learn to be independent our freedom is not dependent on they give us independent or uh, no we have to get rid of all this thing and be totally separated from these people i'm telling you we have to be totally separated from these people with their foolish constitutions and all the the little easy man schism that they make for us we have to get rid of all that and take up our place as a people not as a confused people because right now we don't know where we we don't know our place right now and it's a fact we just don't we just going to day to day out here in people place you know functioning according to their whims that is what we are actually doing right now you understand and most people will come with all different political parties and stuff and say they would um 
they're going to make a change and everything will happen. But then when you check them, they go into church on a Sunday and worship a God with a blue eyes and blonde hair and looking like a homosexual. You understand? So how you will have change when that is not us? You see, because once you decide to, you say you're black. And you're looking for black power, you're looking for whatever you're looking for. You understand? You're looking for black independence, you know, and stuff like that. But then you going and worship some deity with, with that, that is pale skin. You don't look like your people. You have blonde hair, whatever. And you saying that he died to save you. But then historically, you see coming right down to now from thousands of years no people not one person of that description ever come and fight for you and die for you that won't happen so how is it that you could sit on a paper and say that is true you live in a delusion and if that is your mentality you might as well just stop talk about black freedom because you don't know who you are Stop talking about black freedom. Stop talking about anything black. Because you are a confused person. You see? And then you, you actually like double-minded. Because you one part of you saying one thing, and then the next part doing a completely different thing. So just forget the whole thing. So for the few who decide to stand firm and go and educate or teach the people what is true black freedom what you should do we have to admit our admit our mistakes and errors that we make over the years if we can't do that we're just constantly repeating it that is why i say what i say in relation to betrayal because that is one of our our thing we always do each other we always betray each other always betray each other it is proof we always looking to set up each other so once we get to know what is our errors we could change we could change it you know we could sit down we could think about it we could walk out walk with it and we could change it but we have to admit it is so and that's the way we'll be able to step forward money in freedom believe that it's true they say money answer a lot of things but that is material things Money don't answer anything for your soul. Right? So we have to strive towards freedom. Strive towards freedom. And freedom is getting to know who you are. Your origin. Where you come from. Where you're at at the moment. What you are doing now at this moment. Where you're going. You know, I read a quote recently. I can't remember who said that quote. But that guy said, there are two, the two most important time in your life is when you are born and when you find out why. So, in our case here, you understand. What is important to us is where we come from what caused us to be here? How are we gonna get out of here? Where we are going? How are we gonna get out of here? The point is, we have to free ourselves from all this mental stress, this heavy yoke we have upon us. We have to do that. And we can't do it all by ourselves. You see, you have to do it with a heart of love. You have to renew our mind. There is a reason why the scriptures say you have to create a new a new heart you have to create a new mind you have to think differently what they taught you what you learn what they educate you with you have to flush this thing out of your system you understand you have to talk to the most high yahuwah and tell him to create in in in, in you a new heart you know you have to you know he said do, do not be conformed to this world because when he said that Satan rules the world, wickedness. So he said, do not be conformed to it, but be transformed 
with the renewing of your mind by thinking differently thinking on a higher level thinking on a higher plane you know thinking on a higher vibes you know your vibration have to be different you know thinking on a higher wavelength you have you have to be like that you know you have to be vibrating like in a in a real spiritual manner then and people most definitely would never understand somebody with a, just a natural mind somebody who just think that life is just to sit down and eat some food and go and sleep you know people who think that we would never understand you and because of that trust me your enemies will be great we have to remember that okay so that is what we have to know and more you see we have to know where we are at any given moment okay freedom yes you could be free in this wicked world we could so be at peace be blessed i'm always happy to be here as you know so um i'll most definitely see you in another video there is no two ways about it is the absolute truth so let's try for freedom and let's try for peace and love i can't do saying that i could never tired talking about peace and love and togetherness for all people be at peace shalom <laughs>